Landers Therion does what now? Okay, okay, let me pause this hype train and for just a second and make this very, very clear. This Pokemon isn't the same as it used to be, rather, it for once isn't the king of competitive Pokemon, which is why something like this is actually not all that surprising, and you'll see why. See, Landers Therion lost a couple key moves, like Rock Polish, Knock Off, Toxic, superpower, and more, which makes this thing not as competitive or overbearing as it used to be. Now, you have to rely instead of superpower on hammer arm, which is just worse superpower with the addition of worse accuracy. No knockoff is definitely huge, because Pokemon like the Lake Spirits or Cresselia can come in much easier, barring U-turn of course. Anyways, we have to mention the power creep in this generation. Obviously, the one that stands at the top and basically is Landorus but on drugs is Great Tusk, and it's for obvious reasons that aren't worth getting into like for the gazillion time that you guys have all basically heard of. But let's also think back to pre-home meta, where Garganacle was actually one of the best Pokemon for its bulk alongside unaware Dondozo. Both of these Pokemon, or in fact all three of these Pokemon, were iconic staples that helped shape the metagame to what it was. Two of these three Pokemon are excellent switch-ins to Landorus' really only attacking move of EQ. Cressalia, as I mentioned earlier, also suits to common against the former king because of Levitate. Now, what do all three of these common switches actually have in common with one another? I know, even with Cressalia, what do they all have in common? Well, before I tell you that, I do have a very important announcement to make. We are on the road to 7k subscribers, and I need your guys' help. I make competitive Pokemon content like this all the time, and if you guys enjoyed this video, you guys will definitely like what's coming in the future. It would really mean a lot for your guys' support. Anyways, back to the video. All three of these Pokemon are heavy Pokemon, and two of these Pokemon are weak to grass. This is where Grass Knot out of all moves comes in. Even the mods on Smogon were oblivious to this one move, showing how no one thought this move would theoretically come in handy. Grass Knot is a move that is based on weight, and the heavier the Pokemon is, the more damage it will do, all on top of that it's a grass type move. Tusk, Garg, Dozo, and Cresselia are all heavy Pokemon, and three of the four take super effective damage from it. Cresselia takes damage, but compared to the rest, it can handle it quite well. Lando can also U-turn into it, so it's not that big of a deal. But this is also extremely vital in having this Pokemon stay afloat. Those Pokemon did seem like the obvious checks to this Nerf King initially, but Landris now has found a way to keep itself from being completely hardwalled. Even against other Terra water users or even Urshifu, it can serve as a pretty good threat, and it's something Urshifu definitely does not want to switch into. And this also becomes a semi-guessing game because most of these variants don't reveal Grassa until mid to late game to really shift the momentum back to their side, which can really derail many teams' plans. I know for one, I've encountered quite a few, and let me say, they are not fun to play against. A set of EQ, U-Turn, Grass Knot, and either Spike, Stealth Rock, or Bulk Up is pretty commonly run together. With this, Landers Therion for the most part can get rid of its plaguing new threats it has on its side. With already pretty good bulk and an excellent ability, this Pokemon can stick around and pose as a late game threat if you're not careful. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Grass Knot Landers Therion is pretty good. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think, and join the Discord as well if you guys haven't already. Thanks for watching.